My name is Meta Brunzema, and I'm an architect. Um, and currently, I'm working with Adam Brown on this um, transparent floating pool. What you see on the photograph is a pool, which is organic shape, and it floats in the water, um, held by these anchors. Now, you access is from the center, and this here is also floating in the water. These are the change rooms, and above this structure is an outdoor cafe. Now, this whole pool is set into the water. Now, what you see in the background here is um, a pool pavilion. These are change rooms, and this is an outdoor cafe. Um, here is a terrace for umbrellas and um, lawn chairs. The idea was to have a transparent pool so that when you swim in it, you can actually see the river water underneath of you and around you. This pool will be set into the water, and these things are flotation devices that help hold up the edge of the pool. What you see here is a scale figure of a person swimming in the pool. The reason to make it this particular shape is so that it sets beautifully into the water, and um, it will float very loosely and it will be, become almost part of the natural environment. What is shown in black could either be a pier or a bulkhead or even um, any kind of edge of water, maybe even a beach. Now, this structure here is the pool pavilion with changing rooms on either side and an open outdoor cafe at the top. One of the main design criterion for me was to keep it very small and very open for views looking through. So that when you are on the pier, you can actually see through, see beyond the water, and when you're above, you can actually see all the way around. Um, there is a small terrace here facing the water for umbrellas and for um, lounge chairs. Um, this is the main way into the pool. So these are actually floating, and even the central access pier is floating. So the whole thing is wonderfully integrated into the water. Now at this point, you are feeling as if you are in the river. And that was really the point of this whole pool, to make you feel as if you're swimming in the river, um, feeling you know, small, slight wave action, um, really wonderfully being integrated into this wonderful body of water. The pool is made out of transparent plastic material which is semi-rigid. However, it is rigid enough so that you feel safe in this pool. This pool is set directly into the water. On one side, we have a recreational swimming area. On the other side is a lap swimming area. These are standard lap lanes, 75 feet long. Um, unlike a regular pool with a terrace all around, this particular pool has a central access dock. So this, from here, one would jump into the pool either from one side or the other. Um, I felt that um, this side of the pool should be very large and um, for recreation of children, for educational programs, and it should be completely open to the river. So again, this structure feels like it's open to all sides, just like the pool is open to all sides. Um, the way to enter, currently I'm working with Adam Brown. Yeah, I'm uh, president of Working Waterfront Association and we're the sponsoring organization for uh, this feasibility study uh, for the floating pool that Meta and I are working on together personally uh, in cooperation with our sponsor, uh, the Parks Council. Um, right here what you're looking at is the principle behind the floating pool. Uh, works off of Archimedes' principle, actually, and some of the laws of uh, stability, which are utilized when you're discussing uh, any kind of ship design or any floating structure design. What you have here, this is a miniature model of the pool itself, just to illustrate the, uh, the principle. And Archimedes' principle states that a body wholly or partially submerged in 
a body of, uh, of water or any liquid will be buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of that liquid displaced. But what that means in a nutshell is that if you have this, this pool here, which weighs a certain amount and displaces a certain amount of water, even if it's filled with a liquid inside, will only sink to the extent of the weight of this whole of the water displaced by this uh, pool. So if this thing is designed and engineered properly, it will always float no matter what. Now you'll see it's a little unstable here, but the way that's dealt with in the pool itself is to have actual flotation devices along the edge of the pool so that you can never have an unstable condition. And that's the basic principle behind it. It's pretty simple and it's what's used to keep uh, pretty much any floating structure uh, afloat in, um, in any body of water. Yeah, we were concerned about uh, wave action washing river water, uh, contaminated river water, over the side into the, uh, the filtered water of the pool. So what we decided to do about that is we're going to engineer the height of the pool so that the edges are either high enough above the water line so that it will, it will come up above the highest uh, average wave height that you might get from any wake, or another method of dealing with that would be to have a wave attenuator. It would be some kind of a floating curtain or fixed, fixed curtain on the uh, offshore side of the pool <coughs> towards the river, which would then stop any kind of wave action and you would create a still body of water right around the pool itself. So you would never have any major wave action which would then wash over it. Okay, working waterfront's interest in this pool is uh, based on our one of our prime missions, which is to increase appropriate use of, of the New York waterways and to encourage environmentally sensitive uh, uses um, of the waterways as well. Um, we feel this pool really fits within our mission perfectly. Uh, we are very, very concerned that the, as, as the waterfront gets cleaned up, people are able to get back into the rivers. Unfortunately, there uh, have been a lot of cases where public swimming has been proposed in the core harbor areas of the city but no one has taken into consideration health codes which continue to prohibit any public swimming uh, beaches. Um, right now that's the situation on a number of projects so we felt there needed to be another way to address the issue and the uh, floating swimming pool is it. Particularly this one here which is transparent because when you put it in the water it virtually disappears and we feel there's no better way to encourage the city to address the issue of poor water quality than to get people into the river in, in a, a way that will almost emulate actually swimming in the waters without having to deal with the, uh, with the health problems. Now, the, the, whole, the whole facility is uh, it's very flexible. What we're really focusing on is the pool itself. The pavilion, the changing rooms, these are all things that we, we have this model here just as an illustration, but what we're focusing on is the pool itself. The pavilion is really going to be whatever the community wants or needs. It can be in an existing structure. It can be something the community itself designs and builds. We're concerned about uh, the actual pool itself and doing a, a high design and engineering and design intensive feasibility study to determine whether or not it's cost effective to build this type of pool and eventually construct it on a fairly uh, mass production basis to be able to give it to as many communities as possible that have been trying to explore ways to increase swimming access into the river. This is, this is the mission of, of working waterfront and, and this is why we feel this pool so well fits within, uh, within our guidelines. It also is part of uh, an ongoing effort that we've been exploring together with our not-for-profit sponsor, the Parks Council, who has been doing feasibility studies for floating swimming pools for about 10 to 15 years now. They're going forward with plans to build a particular type of floating swimming pool within a modified steel barge, and that's perfect for certain waterfront conditions. We're looking at this one uh, for waterfront areas where there's a lot of concern about environmentally sensitive uh, uh, um, habitat areas where 
the community uh, and the environmental community in particular wants to have maximum light penetration and reduce shading by any kind of floating structures. Uh, an area project like that would be the Hudson River Park where there's specific laws in place which puts a maximum cap on any floating structures and shading. So the sensation of for the swimmer, the experience is that they're actually in the river itself. And that's what we really want because there's no better way, again, to have people take back, take possession of their river um, emotionally than to be in it. And we want to be able to help New York and the community do that in a safe way and also an environmentally sensitive way. One of the issues that we're going to be exploring in the feasibility study is the mooring system. Since the pool is designed to be moored in almost any condition in the river, uh, whether it's off of a bulkhead or a pier or even a, uh, a natural slope or riprap beach, um, the mooring system is going to be critical. Uh, it's tidal waters and this represents a tide tensioning mooring system. This being the anchor and the little white float being the, the tide adjustable uh, tensioning device. So as the tide goes up and down, the, uh, the mooring system always stays stays uh, tensioned and the pool stays in place, rising and falling with, uh, with any tide condition. Now what you see along the edges are representative uh, flotation devices which will keep the pool stable uh, in just about any condition as well. These are one of the things that we're going to be looking at uh, with some of our consultants. Right now we're uh, looking at retaining marine engineers, ocean engineers, uh, naval architects to look at all issues of stability and uh, any of the other uh, environmental, environmentally impacted uh, conditions in the river or, or in any area of the harbor. This again to determine what areas of any body of water are more appropriate for this particular design. Uh, we're also going to look at what types of materials are appropriate for a pool of this, of this type. Now, we've initially been looking at, uh, at the pool being designed out of semi-rigid uh, plastics, but we've got polymer engineers who are going to be really determining what types of materials are appropriate for the sides, whether they need to be a, a solid, clear plastic or whether it's a uh, semi-rigid. And the pool bottom may, in fact, be, be flexible or it might wind up being some type of a hinged hard bottom as well, which would be a clear plastic, perhaps a Lexan type material. Uh, this is what the polymer engineers will be, uh, will be exploring. And again, this is the whole nature of the feasibility study to determine whether this type pool can be uh, economically feasible and, uh, at, at a cost that could be mass produced and again, given to uh, just about any community that would, that would want one. Um, the pavilion really is whatever the community wants it to be or not at all. You can remove this completely and then you could see that these floating docks could actually lead right up to a pier or it could lead right to a bulkhead or even right up to a slope beach and you don't need any pavilion at all if you, uh, if you choose. So this could be a, some kind of a floating dock there right up to a beach. So we're concerned about the pool. We'll let the communities determine what, uh, what types of shoreside facilities that they, they want to, uh, to support this pool. I'm, I'm a commercial diver by trade. I've been doing it for 20 years. And when I'm in the East River, uh, there are days when we have 15 feet of visibility and you can see fish. When you, have, when you get below uh, a certain uh, surface layer of uh, of fresh water, salt water mixing together, the water clears up a little bit down below. You get below the layer where you have any, any plankton or algae blooms and the water gets clearer so that you'll actually be able to see uh, anywhere from two to ten feet or more beneath the pool. And what actually happens is since you've got clear water within the pool itself, it makes it like a glass bottom boat. So you've got a clear water box already extending down through the surface layer of, uh, of, of murkier water into the clearer water. What that will also do will be to attract fish to the light and any other marine organisms, they'll come up 
to the uh, the clear sides, and they'll they'll hang around the sides here, and people will be able to see them as they're uh, as they're swimming if they have goggles on. For this is really an aquarium within the river. And, and that's exactly the kind of feeling we want people to have. We want them to feel that they're swimming in their own private aquarium with the fish on the outside and the people on the inside, which again, it illustrates the sense of disconnection to the river in a sense that uh, will make people, again, want to take up the battle and, and really fight to get the water quality cleaned up so they don't have to have that separation from the river ultimately. The central float here is actually the access pier. This represents a person um, to scale on this, uh, on this thing and they would be able to step down off into the water or they would actually be a ladder going down into the water. Now this also, the central floating access pier, is where you would have the filtered water source coming through underneath and uh, is also where you would have the lighting for the pool. All the services would run through a central, uh, central conduit underneath this and then out onto the floating access dock onto whatever shore structure that we have. So within the pool itself, you don't have any mechanics per se other than the actual, uh, the actual end openings or the, uh, the light fixtures. All the mechanics are on shore or on some floating structure adjacent to it. Meta on her own was uh, getting involved with the Parks Council and saw their feasibility study for their type of floating pool. She got excited about the idea of swimming in the river and heard that you weren't going to be able to have it and she came up with the concept for a transparent floating pool. She played around with it for a while and then came up with the model and then I started working with her and consulting with her on it and we decided this is a perfect opportunity to partner together to try and uh, Put, uh, put a project like this out on the table. And even if it never gets built, the, the important thing is that the idea is out there. I think it's important that people start to address the issue of, of swimming the river. And Meta's uh, concept design really illustrates that in a way that, uh, that is undeniable and, and, and really quite, uh, you know, it's quite attractive. It, it really addresses it in a very aesthetically pleasing way. Also, what it would do is bring something really wonderful and exciting to the waterfront. Um, something that would be a real draw, something that would be um, something for the rest of the world to see, something that would be um, exciting for young people, for old people, something for people to watch from the beach, from a boat, from within, from without. Um, something that would be excitement all around while being very, very simple at the same time. It's a prototype. It's, it's really designed to make people more aware, to make people start to think about new ways to address their waterfront, and, and that's what we're really trying to do here. This photograph shows Stuyvesant Cove, which is one of the possible locations for their floating pool. Where would you put it? Well, it would probably float in this area over here. Um, again, the details would have to be worked out with the community. Paint it and see mm -hmm. some possible. If you see anything that looks like mm -hmm. a possibility, I can just go through, flip through like this. Yeah, yeah. Saying um, this book shows images of um, Manhattan shores. Um, many of the shore locations could actually house um, this floating pool and uh, the pool itself could become yet another recreation, re recreational activity together with boating, um, sailing, enjoying the water. Um, what's wonderful is to see the skyline, um, to see land, to see um, the water all at the same time while engaging in bathing, swimming, or watching the river ecology. Here you really see the first idea, which is to have a wonderful clear body of water floating within the rivers surrounding Manhattan. What you see is a wonderful organic shape shown here in turquoise, um, becoming almost like a lens to the river itself. Again, what it is, it's, um, it's almost rounded, it's organic shaped, it fits into the natural environment, 
and it offers incredible panoramic views all around to the uh, spectacular skyline and to the water itself. The upper level of this structure has an open-air cafe that would be open from April to October. Um, it would be um, completely open, possibly with um, some um, air curtains, and there is um, a wonderful counter with um, bar stools facing the water. Um, so it's most incredible. At night, the views would be spectacular. The whole cafe is open all the way around. Um, on one side is the bar area. Um, on this particular side would be tables. Um, there could be, you know, light food. It could be cakes. It could be more like um, a bar environment. Um, over here is another exit stair and a dumbwaiter. Um, all of it is very well connected to um, the egress and it's very easy to enter and access um, this cafe. Uh, what I also envision is um, the pool lit at night from, from the center. There are going to be lights shining out and um, the whole thing will be glowing like a jellyfish. <laughs> so um, I imagine a sunset on the river, um, the sun going down at 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night and the lights are s slowly starting to come on and there are many people in this pool. It will be the most wonderful experience.